Hello there, welcome to another video. So today I want to look at how I draw a pet portrait on a small scale. You can see here that I'm drawing this little foal at the moment. I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils um, on a hot press watercolour paper. And to give you an idea as to the size that I'm working on, her head is approximately two inches by three inches, which is actually quite tiny compared to the usual size of portrait that I create. For instance, to give you an example, I've just finished a commission of a horse's head and the head is about 10 inches by 11 inches. So you can see that this is quite a bit smaller. Just because it's smaller though, I want to create a realistic rather than an impressionistic look to the portrait. So I adjust my techniques accordingly. And here are my top 10 tips and techniques for achieving that. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here or not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the video. I add a new video each week, it's usually on a Thursday. So if you want to see those, click the bell and you'll receive a notification when a new video comes out. So here we go. Here are my top 10 tips for drawing with colour pencils on a much smaller scale. So my first tip is that I use more circular strokes when applying colour in a smaller portrait. And what do I mean by this? Uh, well, what I mean is on a larger portrait, I might build up the layers using lots of little fur strokes all in the direction of the fur. And that may be true with smaller portraits, but it will not always work because each stroke of that pencil will be much larger in comparison to the overall size of the portrait. The tip of the pencil will obviously be larger in comparison comparison to the um, the size of the portrait and lots of fur strokes may just overpower the portrait and make the area look very heavy so by me working in smaller circular motions it means that I can make the area look a lot less overworked at the end that may mean that I use circular motions on the lower layers and just add a few suggestions of fur strokes in the right direction on the final layer or I may not add any fur directional strokes to that area at all if it's not that obvious in the reference photograph. Basically, if I don't see first strokes on the photograph, I don't try to put them into the final portrait. So using circular strokes can just help me to keep an area looking fresher and less heavy and less overworked. And this brings me on quite nicely to tip two, which is I need to observe the direction of the lines correctly. And of course, this is this is obviously true of a larger portrait as well. But because you're working on a larger scale, there can be a little bit of room for error of a line. And it probably wouldn't be noticed in the final portrait if I got a line that was slightly in the wrong position. But this isn't the case with a small portrait. When I'm working on a very small portrait, I need to pay lots of attention to the direction of any lines of the fur um, that might be in the reference photograph. If I make a mistake with a direction or with a length of line, the mistake will be so much more obvious than if I'm working on that larger portrait that I just mentioned. And this comes back again to the point that I mentioned in tip one, that if there's not a fur direction in the reference photograph, then I just won't put one in. The circular strokes will help with this. Uh, they'll add colour to an area without actually working that direction in and if I'm ever in doubt because I just can't make out a direction of fur from the photograph I just don't put that fur direction in. I think it's much easier to get away with not having a direction uh, showing than it is to get away with details on a smaller portrait if they're in the wrong direction they'll just stick out like a sore thumb. So it is important to observe that reference photograph and observe the direction of any lines correctly. And tip three follows on from that. So that you can observe the lines and shapes correctly in the reference photograph, it will be very helpful if you keep the reference photograph the same size as your piece of work. I tend to keep my reference photograph on a computer or a tablet or a phone and I often enlarge the reference image on my screen to see, for example, what an area looks like, uh, what a line might look like. But I have to remember that, for example, a large line or a shadow might look huge on that enlarged 
large version of the reference photograph but actually it's a tiny little mark when the reference image is resized to the same size as the portrait that I'm working on so whilst I do enlarge uh, the image to get a feel for what the overall shape color or blend is supposed to look like I make sure that I constantly reduce the reference image to its actual size to check how an area looks relative to the actual portrait I find that it is actually helpful for me to uh, go between enlarging and reducing the size on the screen um, because I do have mine on a computer screen but if you print your reference photograph so you have a hard copy of your reference photograph I would suggest that it would be helpful to print it the same size as your portrait and that will give you an accurate reference image to work from so tip four is be confident with your color choice on a smaller portrait you are of course working in smaller areas and this means that there's very little room to experiment with the blending of colors directly down on the paper on a larger portrait you may get away with trying out a few colors to see what will blend and what will work for you and if those choices were not right and you decide against them you can of course lose them under other layers in the final portrait but that's very different when you're working on a small scale there just isn't the room to experiment directly on the paper so if you haven't drawn that color of animal before and if you're not familiar with which pencil choices to make to achieve that desired blend of color that you want it would be worth testing those colors and blending on a scrap piece of paper first rather than trying to work it out uh, directly on the portrait and that'll mean that you can keep your areas looking fresh and not overworked or heavy so tip four ties in quite nicely with tip five, which is I tend to use less layers, particularly in some areas. As I said earlier, it's very easy to overwork a small portrait. I can still use layers to achieve the intensity of the colours that I want, but I find that I may use less layers than if working on a larger piece. And this is particularly true of areas of detail, as it's much easier to lose the detail and overwork an area if I'm applying lots of layers. Sometimes just one little pencil stroke in a smaller portrait achieves what might take several or many in a larger piece of work. Tip six is that I keep my pencil sharper than usual when I'm drawing on a smaller scale. If you've seen my other videos where I'm drawing larger portraits, you'll know that whilst I do have a need for ultra sharp pencils sometimes, there are also many times where I'll use what I call a rounded sharp point. So it's sharpish, but it's not super sharp. But when I'm working on a small scale, I tend to keep a much sharper pencil for most of the time. I want my pencil strokes to be small relative to the overall size of the piece of work and this is especially true when working in areas of detail. I'll still use a chisel tip pencil to lay down larger areas of colour but this will still be a finer chisel tip than if working on a larger piece of art. Tip number seven is the importance of using a light hand. And this is, of course, really important in all colour pencil work, whether large or small. But whereas a heavy mark in a larger portrait may go unnoticed, it's likely to really stand out in a smaller piece. Or if you don't use light pressure, you could find that you've filled in too much of the area with too much colour before you've got the blend or the colour or the look that you actually wanted and as we've talked about earlier that can lead to the finished piece looking heavy overworked and perhaps they're not as realistic as you would have liked so whilst um, using a light hand is always important with color pencil work it really is extra important when you're working on a very small scale Tip number eight is to make sure that you erase your graphite pencil lines. It's always advisable to erase the graphite lines from your line drawing when you're working with coloured pencil because you don't obviously want them to show on the final portrait. But this is even more important when you're working on a smaller scale as each pencil line will show up and will be exaggerated in the final piece. You'll want to make sure that you erase any lines that might show so that you you don't take away from that realistic look if that's the result that you're looking for. Tip nine 
please take your time. People automatically assume that a smaller piece of work means that it's going to take far less time to complete. And that isn't always true. And in my experience, that really isn't true at all because I still want to capture the detail and achieve a realistic finish. Taking things slowly along with the light hand that I've already mentioned will allow you to control the portrait better and see errors early on. And you'll have more chance of correcting them if you need to. When working on a small scale, I actually find that I spend more time sharp in my pencils and it actually takes me longer to add details into the portrait because I really have to think about each line before I put it down because there's no room for error I may not have the space to go over it if I need to or adjust it as I would do if I was working on a larger scale so I have to think in advance before I actually do something. So if you slow down, take your time, you'll have more chance of spotting issues as they arise and we'll be able to deal with them in good time. And finally, that brings me on to tip 10, which is consider the paper choice. So if you usually work on a paper that has quite a bit of texture, you may have to choose one with less texture if you're working on a small scale. I work with Fabriano Artistico a lot and I used a single sheet of the 300 GSM weight, not the 600 GSM that I'd normally use for larger pieces of work when I was drawing this little foal. I find that I can can get to where I want to be in terms of creaminess and the ability to add detail faster with the 300 GSM than I can with the 600. So that just worked for me for drawing this full. Just as you wouldn't use a cold press watercolour paper to draw a larger scale portrait because there would be perhaps too much texture for what you wanted, you may find that something like Fabriano Artistico Hot Press might have too much detail for drawing a smaller or or a miniature scale portrait. It may be fine for you, but if you find that you're having difficulty adding details to a smaller piece, then the paper choice is one factor that you may need to look at. So there you are, my 10 tips for drawing very small portraits with coloured pencil. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here or not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the video and click that bell so you receive notifications of when new videos come out. So like I say, I hope you enjoyed the video and all that's left for me to say is thanks very much and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks. Bye bye.